hello everybody, this is David Cuartillas, co-founder of Arduino. I'm here transmitting live from my shed. So you have to excuse that everything is a little bit messy as you see around, but I mean, I've been traveling for two full weeks, going back and forth between Sweden and Spain, attending different events. And I'm here today to talk about some of those events, especially those that have to do with Arduino education. Uh, I've been very, very lucky to be invited to both Robocampeones, which is a student uh, competition and uh, fair where they were showing a lot of projects and I will talk a little bit about that and I've also been invited to uh, P I can't remember the name PR3D which is a, a educational conference on robotics and 3d printing um, looking at the pedagogical aspects behind those and I've also been invited to the one the experts of the Cotec which is a Spanish uh, innovation office where I I represent actually Arduino as an education and technology expert. Plus, I've been giving lectures at the Malaga University and at Bilbao MTA education program. Everything during two weeks. And that's the reason why <clears throat> I couldn't make my normal live cast at the normal time this week. And I had to postpone it to Friday. As you know, I typically run the Arduino live cast every Thursday, 7 p.m. CEST. Uh, this week, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. So let's talk quickly about the program for today. Basically, I'm going to be talking about the Robo Campeones uh, show, and I will later in the day also pu publish um, a blog post on the Arduino blog about it. Uh, mostly because I believe it's a remarkable experience that everyone at some point in their life should, should experience. I've been invited to Robo Campeones multiple times, and uh, I've also been invited to other events in Spain multiple times. And uh, uh, just to say, Unfortunately, I cannot attend everything I would love to attend. So, uh, so I, I, I took the opportunity of going to Robo Campeones just because uh, I was um, having to attend to a different event. And here you can see a picture at the time we arrived to Robo Campeones at 9 a.m. in the morning on uh, Thursday, May 17, 2018. And what you see here is about 2,000 students coming from different places in Spain, coming together and getting ready for what was to come, which was a competition in uh, different areas of robotics, as well as a um, uh, small fair of projects. And Robo Campeones started, um, started 15 years ago. This is the 15th edition of Robo Campeones, and it's been running around uh, different cities. So you can see here some pictures. Uh, these pictures were taken by Coleoptero, which is a member of the Arduino community. You see him here in the picture with me as we were <laughs> uh, recording live uh, some interviews. And I recorded a whole lot of different interviews to members of the community. Uh, in this case, the one you see on the picture is Victor. And Victor is, uh, I would say, the main organizer, even though he had a lot of help from different people and not all the credit should fall on him. But Victor has been the person that has been contacting me, in this case, to attend Robo Campeones. And uh, he's been preparing it this year in Fuenlabrada. Fuenlabrada is a, a small city outside Madrid. It's about uh, 20 minutes by, by local train. And uh, he works at the school there. And he, together with other volunteers, worked throughout the year to prepare this event. And I said there were 2,000 competitors plus 1,000 kids that came just to watch. And to me, that's very important because uh, we're talking about that kids came from all over Spain. About 1,000 kids came from all over Spain just to watch what was going on with this event. Um, so I'm gonna just briefly open the chat because it looks like there is a question. Oh yeah, there's people arriving in the chat. So hello everybody in the chat. This is gonna be a pre-release uh, live cast. Uh, feel free to post any kind of questions you might have. Um, today, as I said, I'm gonna be talking almost exclusively about Robo Campeones, but I also have to say there were other events happening in Spain uh, in the last two weeks. There was actually at least five different Robotics competition. It was Robo Campeones. It was uh, a Robolot, which has actually 17 years of tradition in building robotics competitions. Fantech in Malaga, which was the third edition. Uh, actually, today, as I'm speaking, uh, it's the end of the Robicat, which is made in Cadiz. Um, <laughs> Cantabrobot, which is uh, made in uh, uh, Colindres, which is a city in Cantabria, in the north of Spain. And, and so back and so forth. So there has been a lot of events the last couple of days, uh, the last couple of weeks, sorry. And, and the reason for that is that it's the end of the year. 
and people plan these events at the end of the academic year, just before the final exams, so our students can come together and compete or, or show their projects to other students. So what is going on with uh, RoboCampeones? And I'm going to check RoboCampeones for you. RoboCampeones.org is the website. And here you can see this is the RoboCampeones logotype, and it's uh, a Lego NXT block. And it was celebrated in, in Fuenlambrada, as I said. And uh, uh, I will show you different videos of different projects, so we will skip this part. And you see here is a traditional competition and it's been sponsored by a bunch of different people. Here is IBM, there is the, the Fuenlabrada City Council, Prodel, which is an educational distributor that distributes Arduino boards, by the way. Microlog, that is also a pretty relevant Arduino distributor. The two university, uh, three universities, sorry, BQ, which is an Arduino competitor, <laughs> just to say. Um, AV, Flexbot, and Prometech. And the last, the uh, Prometech is also an Arduino distributor. And uh, like every robotics competition has its own peculiarities, but uh, the, the Fuenlabrada edition of uh, Robocampeones had competitions both in the Lego category and in the Arduino category. And uh, the, the Lego category has always had things like Sumo, Rescue, and so on. And already in 2011, a well-known teacher from us, uh, Julio Mejias from ES Separat from Toledo, asked why shouldn't we just have also an Arduino rated category in the competition? Because uh, many many schools can't afford uh, Lego robots and they are moving into, or they were moving in 2011 into using Arduino boards. And so RoboCampion has opened up for like so-called open category, which is uh, including any kind of technology, not just Arduino, but any kind of technology in order to build robots. <clears throat> and they started building different kind of machines. And uh, they also opened up for a free category where anybody could build anything they wanted. So there was like the traditional competition, sumo, uh, rescue, and so on, plus a free category. And then this year they introduced a hockey for robots, which is the, what you see in this picture here. And hockey for robots consists in building two teams and the teams, they have to start from the corners and they have different colored balls in the center. And the goal is moving the colored balls to the color corner. So one team is the red team and the other team is the blue team. And uh, the robots are telecontrolled, so the, the students have to build the robots controlled for mobile phones or any other wireless protocol that is not Bluetooth, which is in this case what they used. And uh, they, they work in teams in moving those balls to the other side and they can fight each other. So this is the, the new uh, offering, so, so to say, the new competition that was introduced at uh, RoboCampion in 2018, and it was a lot of fun. So the, the way RoboCampeones works is that uh, the students, they get to show, let's go back to the pictures, the students, uh, they come together and they get to show their projects in a fair, but at the same time, there's competitions running around. So this is a whole basketball court. Let's let's go back to the picture from above. And uh, on both sides, on, on the one corner of the basketball court and the other corner of the basketball court, they are uh, tatamis for fighting, so there's sumo fights. Uh, or the hockey fields, and the central area is meant for people to um, meant for people to uh, uh, exhibit in the open category. And this interesting thing: the open category has been growing and growing over the years. So, uh, so uh, they had over 120 projects, I think, this year. Uh, and they, for example, in the sumo category, only in the Arduino category, they had 176 sumo fighting robots, and that's quite quite a lot. So I'm not going to focus in the sumo robots. I will show you a short video of a sumo competition, uh, but I will focus a lot more in the in the open competition. Just for you to see, I will show you a video of the semifinals on the sumo competition on Arduino robots. So here we go. Okay, you saw it. Let's uh, take a look at uh, another one. This is the finals. So you get the idea. This is a, let's say, traditional uh, robotics competition where robots are uh, meeting each other. And most robots had a sensor underneath to detect the, the, the ring so they wouldn't fall out. 
and uh, some sort of distance sensor in front to detect that there was an obstacle with the obstacle was obviously the opponent and they had to go fight the opponent um so let's let's then focus instead in uh, the different projects that, that were that we could find there so there was for example this uh, pov installation where the students built different kinds of povs uh using computer fans and mounting the whole arduino board that you know the classic Arduino board with breadboard, which is my absolute favorite. So they, they were mounting this there and they were using it. Once again, I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna just move the chat window on the side so I can attend the chat window as we are transmitting live. Here we go. And uh, yeah. So we continue now. I just wanted to be able of, of checking out whether there's questions on my other screen. As we're talking because there's a, a nice conversation going on in the chat so uh please uh, continue <laughs> when you're talking that's what the chat is meant for uh then uh there is there was also let's say classic laser harp so it's a classic project where there is you see here there's different points that shoot laser this is a let's say again classic radar So the radar moves around and it maps on the screen what's going on. There was, of course, the, uh, not of course, but there was also the pet robot that was brought by the university uh, for the students to just see what's going on. And it's a very interesting aspect of the. This is a very interesting aspect of the of the whole competition, because obviously, if you run a competition like this one, there is teachers, but the teachers have to be assisting their students. So who's going to be playing the judge on the competition, especially if you have like 176 robots, I think there were over 20 sumo tatamis for the robots to fight. So the competition is actually supported by the university students uh, and they, they are taking care. You see, you see this guy in the white t-shirt and this, this girl here taking the picture. They are from the university and they are supporting uh, uh, the whole competition by uh, acting as judges in the different parts. And being as impartial as possible so there were all sorts of different projects like the one you see here is a, a physics a physics experiment the guys that build different physics experiments that would measure air air pressure humidity temperature and so on um, here is the one to measure air pressure you have to inflate the balloon um, this is also a small project that was a small uh, robotic arm letting the objects pass by, city models, um, buildings, all sorts of weird robots. And as I said, I was conducting interviews all the time and I made 13 interviews that I'm going to be publishing on the Arduino video on YouTube. So if you follow the, if you are subscribed to the Arduino video channel, you will see in the livecast channel why there is a how there is a bunch of different short interviews that will be published they're in spanish and as but i open up the videos for anybody to subtitle them so if anybody wants to volunteer to subtitle one of the videos then it will be a lot easier to translate the subtitles to other languages i unfortunately don't have the time to to translate all of the materials but i just want to publish them so everybody can see them because i think it's very inspirational because everything included technology and science technology and robotics, technology and something else. And um, you see there is a lot of classic projects. And I'm now gonna focus on, uh, oh, here you see, sorry, here you see the, the sumo fights. You see there, uh, a lot of the tatamis are on the floor uh, and the people are having to wear a red or, or a yellow overall to distinguish whether they are in one team or the other. And then there are yaches all over the place to uh, supervise the competition. So it's a very interesting event that happens so fast. It's like starts at nine o'clock and by 2 p.m. everybody has gone home. So there's like all of these competitions running in parallel. And uh, the one difference with other events that, that uh, the events I personally organize is this is a real competition. So there is really big prizes in the end. So the school winning, they might win a big drone or a robotic arm or something else to contribute to the class's equipment. So I, I find it very interesting the students actually compete to equip their own lab for their future years in a better way and that's a very very nice uh, gesture from the organization actually i think um you see 
different projects again. There is a, there were a couple of vending machines um, like this one. So students are experimenting with all sorts of different uh, of different projects. Uh, and we're gonna move uh, to see the the interviews and videos I made. Right now we're watching the the pictures from Coleoptero, which is as I said a member of the community. I'm going to share the folder with you in the chat so that if you're interested, you can. Uh, you can uh, check it out yourself. So here it goes. And if you need to use the pictures or videos for your class, uh, I know that Coleoptor typically publishes them under Creative Commons, so remember to give him credit. And uh, so feel free to use them. So I'm gonna move into, here you can see the prices. For example, Makeblock donated, Oinbot donated a bunch of robots. Uh, Prodel, another company from Spain donated something else. Uh, Comprobot, I think, donated some robotic arms. Uh, so those those were the kind of prices, and it was interesting to see how you know people build interesting projects, um, not always expecting to win anything. So but let's let's talk about the, the the good things we saw. So one of the good things we saw is this uh, walking stick, and it's becoming a bit of a classic in in um, in education here, where the kids build devices where they try to help other people. And I think that's actually very nice because they work towards a, a with a service-minded kind of approach. Um, this is a walking stick that's meant to be helping blind people and has a couple of ultrasound sensors what gives the, the system kind of a, a pretty good resolution on whether there's obstacles on the way. Um, that will be mapped to the box so that it will give the, the person a better idea of what's pending in front of him or her. Uh, but as I said, let's move into the interviews I made, and we will just look at the uh, at the relevant projects that I, I I walked around and I saw a lot of projects, and I selected thirteen projects mostly because I couldn't select everything that I saw, and uh, I'm gonna focus on just four or five of them, just to illustrate what's uh, what's that I saw. Uh, I'm hopefully you will like them the same way I like them. So the first one. Uh, I will talk about is this. Uh, it's about this guy. He made a he made a calculator using App Inventor, and when I asked him, so how long did it take you to to build this calculator? He told me it took me <laughs> it took me ten minutes. So that was <laughs> that was quite a quite a thing to hear this guy like yeah, it took me just ten minutes. Uh, let me just find here half the interviews and. Uh, I, don't, I haven't had even time to, to title the interview, so I don't know exactly what is the one. Con cualquier yeah. número. So I will just let the guy talk in the background and I will just translate as I go a little bit, okay? Because everything is in Spanish. Un lector de QR. Muy bien. Y cuéntame, eh, ¿la calculadora hasta qué hace? Porque tiene una cosa especial, ¿no? Cuando tú calculas, ¿qué es lo que hace? Se calcula todo lo que tú hagas, desde sumas hasta divisiones, con cualquier número, hasta decimales. Y te explica, te lo dice el resultado y la operación que has realizado. So the guy is saying, so this calculator is making any mathematical operation from addition, subtractions, multiplications and divisions. And it tells you the result uh, aloud, so it talks to you. Muy bien, bueno, vamos a hacer, vamos a cambiar de cámara ahora, así. So I changed the camera so we can, so we can see how the it calculates. So right now you're going to see the kid typing an operation and you will hear the results. Uh, as it works. Vale, y voy a coger esta cámara que está colgando aquí encima de mi ordenador para que podamos ver la pantalla de tu tablet. Uh, a ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Así, ah, perfecto. Entonces ahora tenemos puesto para que cuando tú le hagas operaciones lo oigamos. Venga, cuéntanos lo que vas a hacer. Pues eh, es muy simple que, uh, por ejemplo, voy a poner aquí un número al azar, por ejemplo, 234, y aquí pongo este número cualquiera. Y le doy a multiplicar. 234 por 1233 es 288.522. Okay, there you hear it. So that was the, the calculator the kid built, uh, talking aloud the numbers. And he made it in App Inventor. Uh, he told me it took him 10 minutes to build it. And w once it was done, he deployed it in different devices using QR codes. Um, and this guy was 11 years old. <laughs> so that's quite impressive so he told me that he had learned how to program up inventory in class a little bit and then that he built this by himself 
because he thought it was cool and wanted to have this thing for himself. Like he was showing it on the side of the other project he had made with his classmates. So this guy had more more than one project coming to the fair. And uh, the interesting thing uh, to me is that uh, he uh, he was so confident. For him, it was so easy. He was like, yeah, yeah, of course, I made this like super fast. Who cares, <laughs> you know? And uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah, as I said, the, the voice you heard is is one of the additions of App Inventor. So this actually is very easy to build, and you could make it in in no time, right? So let's see. Let's take a look at another different project. Entonces, el estadio se puede utilizar en casos de emergencia o para ayuda humanitaria, ya que es completamente autónomo y y tiene una eficiencia del 21% para utilizarlo de sol a sol o aproximadamente unas 12 horas en el verano. Okay. So this is Julian, and he's talking about uh, an airplane they built, and I have to show you the pictures of the airplane so you get the idea of what we're talking about. And these were on the on the picture list, and this is. Uh, this is a picture of some circuits of the airplane that Coleoptero took, but I, I think I have some other pictures in my own personal folder. And this is an airplane built by the students that has uh, uh, 12 hours autonomy, as much as sunlight. Okay, there you see it. And it's a drone, and the kids build the drone by themselves. Uh, the kids are 13 years old, a team of five kids from school, and they were very interested in building this spray from scratch. <clears throat> I just want to show you the picture that I took of the actual device. Here it is. Uh, here you can see the airplane. So, uh, you see it's, it's pretty big, and uh, it has two different Arduino boards. One is meant to be controlling uh, the flight, and it's, it's an Arduino Mini, and the Arduino Mini is connected to gyroscope, accelerometer, uh, and some other things, a couple of sensors. And the other one is meant to be controlling the battery charge and the motor movements. Um, and on top of that, it has a telemetry, like it has a, a radio system there, and it transmits life as it flies. And what you see here is a, the receiving signal we see here in the computer screen. And uh, what it's transmitting is not digital information, it's transmitting voice so they installed a text-to-speech on the on the plane so it, it's transmitting on walkie-talkie frequency so you could connect to the plane and hear what the plane is measuring like oh temperature is this and that or you know wind speed is this or that so it's a very relevant thing um, and the kids they took two months to build it so they build it during classes and also a bit after class it's quite quite an impressive Quite impressive uh, project here you see the guys and this actually the guys that got the the uh, arduino prize so i had to give the the one of the projects that i that I found was the best project i have to give them a prize that was my role and i gave them the uh the arduino special prize oh yeah by the way they also simulated uh using autodesk tools they simulated uh, the flight of the plane and how it looked like in a kind of like in a wind in a wind pipe or in a wind tunnel sorry so you you can see which is the level of achievement students can can reach uh, when working in a project like this and the thing that impressed me the most is that they actually had two series of prototypes here you see the first prototype and this is the the first board they built has the accelerometer there or the emu emu6 uh, Three axis accelerometer margin gyroscope. They are, they're both systems are there. The radio transmission chip. Uh, this BMP 180. I actually don't know what it is. I suspect it's one of the sensors. And here's the Arduino Mini. And as you see here, it's made by Julian Fernandez. That's, that's the guy that built it. And this prototype number one. And they made prototype number two, where they embedded everything on the board, and they implemented this one in the airplane. So. You know that's the level <laughs> so that's uh, quite quite impressive so of course to me this was the project that had to i had to serve the prize and had to get the prize uh, special arduino prize uh, from us and um, uh, so let's continue watching some other of the projects so besides the airplane uh, we had 
here in the interviews you had some other projects. I don't know which one I stopped at. Convertirlo en un PCB que. Y se abren todos los pastilleros para recargarlo. Luego le da al botón 1 y se cierran todos. Y por ejemplo, luego le da al botón 2 o 3. No, al 3. Al 3. Y se abre uno. Well, these girls are talking about the smart pill dispenser. And they build a whole smart smart pill dispenser uh, aimed at people that need to have uh, a system to to uh, to get pills at certain times in the day or only some days in the week. And uh, somebody is saying that these projects are college level. Well, as you know, funny enough, uh, the pill dispenser is a classic project for master students <laughs> at university. Uh, when they work with uh, elderly people or, or so on. So now we see that this is what's happening. Like, like these kids, they get the tools and they get the opportunity to make something pretty impressive by themselves. This is a picture of the pill dispenser and this is a short video how the pill dispenser works. So let's take a look at this. So I was actually I was actually asking whether the pills were real <laughs> or they were fake, and uh, yeah, they they were fake. Uh, so I I took my pill. Um, they were they were candy. Oh sorry, I opened the wrong window. I just wanted to open this one. So as you see here, uh, well that that's one of the that's one of the plays from students. I want to show you another of the plays. Oh yeah, these girls. Sorry, I forgot to say these girls. One of them was 10 years old <laughs> because that was also like my daughter is 10 years old. So I was like, oh my God. So they are like super young and they came from Jaén to Madrid. That's a really long trip to come to show the play because Robo Campeones is not just from Madrid. So they, they are actually coming from all of the all over the country to the competition. So let's take a look at this one. So this is from the same class, but this is a group of boys and they made a candy dispenser. And there you see, so you have to punch in the right code on the keyboard to get the thing to dispense the candy. That's the right code. There you go. Okay. So the kids, 3D printed all of, they designed all of the parts, they 3D printed all of the parts and then they they built everything and showed it. And I, I have a picture of that box from the inside. I, I found it very impressive in the first place when I saw it. And, and to be honest, I was in doubt when I had gave the price between this project and the one from the, with the airplane. Mostly because these kids were 10 and 11 years old. So I, I was really thinking like, okay, just because they are a lot younger and they made a quite impressive uh, achievement where they designed the whole 3D, they designed this whole dispenser where it's using a special piece to, to throw it out through the, using the servo motor and so on. I thought they deserved uh, the price as much as the older kids making the self-flying drone. And um, I want to show you one more thing that, I, that is characteristic for Robo Campeones because if you are thinking about arranging as a teacher you're thinking about arranging something like this in your region, uh, you might be wondering, okay, how do people get organized with this? How does it work? You know? So one of the interviews I made, I made it to, to Victor, and you will, I will post this interview later tonight, and you can see it online later tonight on the Arduino YouTube channel. Um, but but uh, so I was asking him, how do you guys do it? And then they showed me uh, this thing, for example. And this is, this is the, a table of points. There are stickers. And so when the teachers, teachers are moving around, they look for the poster with the name of the project and they stick the points they want. This is very similar to what we in Arduino do for CTC. In CTC we do, the, we do the same thing. People go around and vote, teachers, students, and organizers go, go, go around and vote. Uh, but um, they don't have different amounts of points. These are different amounts of points. And it says there, if we zoom into the picture, oh, sorry, there you go. You see there's different categories. This is Prueba Libre, means open category. Uh, Impression 3D means 3D printing. Uh, and uh, that's it. 
So basically, uh, because I forgot to say, there is there is another category in this competition besides the robotics one, which is 3D printing. And the idea behind 3D printing is that the kids are competing to see who is making the best 3D model and, and printing it. And that's uh, very different from other places where there is a competition basically on the technology. Here's a competition on design. It's a competition on the aesthetics. And to me, that was, again, very important because I think we need to encourage people to use technology for more creative things. And this is actually very creative use. And in Spain, you can find a lot of schools that now they have 3D printers. I think in the region of Madrid, they deployed 330 3D printers a couple of years ago. So uh, having a competition like this one is a good incentive for people to, to think about building stuff. And if you're thinking about how to arrange competition like this one, this is a way. The only problem is that at the end, you need someone who has, has to sit down and add all of these points for all of the projects to see who won. And it's always prone to errors. Uh, so it requires quite some organizing and, uh, and uh, you know, preparing things properly. So uh, I think I will show you one or two more projects and then uh, I will probably call it a day because I, there is more projects. I said there, I made 13 interviews uh, but again, you know, uh, I, you can watch them online there. Even there in Spanish, I think it's going to be very easy for you to understand what they're saying. And I really want to show you this one because I think it's very funny. Like, uh, this is a bit of an older guy and he was impressed by a music video that he saw. And he and his uh, colleague, I think he's called Irene, his colleague, uh, they built this uh, helmet for dancing. So let's take a look how, how this works. I'm clicking the wrong, clicking the wrong thing. I'm not really used to this video viewer. Now, here we go. So the guy is pretty good at dancing, but you see like the eyes are blinking as he's dancing. So I ask him, wow, how did you build this helmet? You know, it's like, how do you make the lights blink? How is it like going back and forth? Like, chuk, 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 chuk. are you using the accelerometer? Are you using, I don't know, detecting how you, how quick you like turn around? How, how is it working? And the guy tells me, no, they, it's just a blink program. <laughs> so it's like blinks one and the other, one and the other, one and the other. You know, I, I think I have by default this this need to look for a complex explanation of to how things work. Um, but of course, the whole point here is that you wear this thing and you're dancing and then it's it, the rest of the story is made by you in your brain by imagining how this thing could be working, right? But it was pretty impressive to see. I mean, um, everybody thought it was really sensorized and it was working using sensors and so on. That one it wasn't. So, uh, as I said, we have plenty. We have plenty of, of pictures here, and uh, uh, you can watch Coleopteros Coleopteros picture stream that I published. You can also watch the Arduino uh, uh, livecast series where I will be publishing the, the interviews that I made to these kids live there. I wanted to transmit live from the event. The problem is that the internet was the only thing that wasn't working, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I think you will have plenty of material for inspiration. So, but you're just asking me on the chat, which is my favorite project. And okay, I have two favorite projects on the, on the one hand, or oh, three, three. On the one hand, I really, really like the airplane. The airplane, I think is genius. It's really well developed and it's very nice. Second, I really like the candy dispenser because of who made it. It was his three kids, 10 and 11 years old, and they made it flawlessly. The design was very clean and it was nicely produced. Uh, and then uh, one more that I liked uh, was, uh, was uh, a smart shower, smart ecological shower that was made by a couple of girls that has a couple of sensors to just cut the water if the person is not really using the shower or if the water is not at the right temperature so that you don't get too cold water, too hot water when you just want a different kind of water and that saves water, basically. So so there were, that was like a really smart project. And that again showed this idea of like, uh, uh, that people is telling to me recently that, that 
like girls tend to like to build projects that are more service oriented and trying to solve problems and the guys try to do more technical challenges and I, I don't know if that's true uh, I pref prefer not to think about gender uh, stereotypes uh, but in this case uh, actually in this event uh, this was repeated uh, most times so this was a, this was a tendency so I, I want to I want to leave you with uh, this project here that I found in the very last minute because there were so many projects that I, I couldn't find and it's very similar to something I shot in a showed in a previous live cast which was a do it yourself uh, was a do it yourself uh, drawing machine uh, that this, some guys made recycling to CD readers to do the X and Y axis and in this case this guy 3D printed everything. So you see here, he built this whole machine to control this uh, this uh, 2D drawing machine. So it has a Raspberry Pi that talks to an Arduino board. The Raspberry Pi runs a G-code that sends to the Arduino board that controls the, the motors. And then he sends everything from the laptop. So the laptop chooses the drawing, sends it to the other place. And he's explaining how he's using his phone to, to act as an access point. So so the Raspberry Pi and the computer can talk to one another and send the files back and forth and so on. Again, this guy was a little bit older. He was like 70 years old and I like the project. It's not my favorite in a sense because I've seen this before uh, in different in different ways. Uh, but he, he anyway made a, a really nice job. He, he performed a really nice job. So, that said, uh, I want to thank you very much as usual for listening uh, or watching, in this case, the Arduino Livecast live on a Friday afternoon here in Europe. It's uh, 7.45 and I'm going to call it a day and we will leave the chat open for a while as I will continue to edit some of the videos. I already published three of the videos online on the Arduino Livecast. I will try to publish all of the 13 interviews I made and I hope you will like them and I will see you next week here live from Arduino. Remember to subscribe to the Arduino YouTube channel or visit us at the Arduino forum and the Arduino website. Thank you very much and see you soon.